Big upgrades for the top teams as the development war has begun. Mercedes is still not sure about their car as key mistakes revealed. And Lewis Hamilton gives his opinion on who his successor should be. Let's get straight into the latest F1 news. In the lead-up to the Imola race, a lot of attention has been directed towards Ferrari's upgrades, which supposedly draw inspiration from Red Bull. However, the reigning world champion, Red Bull, has not disappointed and introduced five significant new components. This is being regarded as Adrian Newey's final meaningful involvement in the RB20's design. Red Bull discontinued his access after confirming his departure from the team early next year. Red Bull, along with Ferrari and Aston Martin, are leading the pack in terms of updates. Despite winning four out of the first six Grands Prix this year and dominating in qualifying, Red Bull is not complacent. The team aims to put a damper on McLaren's celebrations in Miami. The RB20 has not only received an upgraded floor, but also a new front wing, rear corner, and nose. Since 2022, the floor and Newey's innovative aerodynamic techniques have been credited as the key to Red Bull's success. The latest design, based on computational fluid dynamics, CFD learnings, involves repositioning the shedding edges beneath the wing to extract more localized load while still maintaining flow stability criteria, as stated in the FIA report. Additionally, alterations have been made to the upper surface of the floor body, enhancing the onset flow to downstream parts. Max Verstappen made it clear that the upgrades were not a response to McLaren's victory in the Miami Grand Prix. These updates were always in the works at Red Bull. Ferrari has also introduced a multitude of new components, specifically seven. Interesting highlights among these are the side pod inlet, engine cover, diffuser layout, and rear wing. The team has incorporated a new P-shape inlet on the side pods, which enhances flow quality over the floor edge. The engine cover has undergone reworked cooling and reduction to improve flow quality towards the rear of the car. The diffuser now features a revised profile optimized to complement Ferrari's other upgrades. Ferrari's 2.0 SF24 also includes changes to the rear suspension, floor edge, and both the front and rear wings. Imola being the first European race makes it more convenient for teams to introduce new parts and replace them if necessary after an accident. As a result, Mercedes has brought the second half of their package. The W15 showcases a new floor body, floor fences, beam wing, rear wing, and front corner. Although the initial part of the upgrade did not yield significant performance gains in Miami, Mercedes attributed it to their rival's progress, affirming that they are heading in the right direction. Aston Martin, aiming to compete with Ferrari's updates, has also made nine impressive changes for the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. The AM24 now boasts new components ranging from a front wing and nose to the floor, diffuser, engine cover, rear suspension, and rear corner. Aston Martin aims to enhance overall performance rather than focus solely on circuit-specific improvements. Their drivers, Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll, are expected to be contenders for a podium finish. McLaren, the most recent race winners in Formula One, have introduced circuit-specific wings for Imola. Alpine, Williams, and Stake have also made adjustments to their floors. Haas has implemented a new rear suspension design, reshaping the top wishbone fairings to better conform to the incoming airflow. George Russell believes that Mercedes may have made too many changes in the ground effect aerodynamic era, stating that they have gone too far with the W15 in their pursuit of performance. When Formula One introduced ground effect aerodynamic cars in 2022, Mercedes surprised everyone with their W13, featuring a design called the Zero Pod, which almost eliminated the side pods from their car. However, as they moved from one track to another, the team struggled to find effective solutions. Despite George Russell's victory at the Brazilian Grand Prix that year, it became evident at the start of the 2023 F1 season that they were not on the right track. This prompted Mercedes to abandon the zero pods, make changes to the suspension, and essentially apply temporary fixes to the W14 until they had the opportunity to design a completely new car. This year, they introduced the W15, a heavily updated car with a different side pod shape, a pushrod rear suspension, and a modified cockpit position. Unfortunately, the results they anticipated have not materialized. Neither George Russell nor Lewis Hamilton have secured a podium finish in a Grand Prix race this season, and Mercedes has only scored 64 points in six races, placing them 175 points behind Red Bull, the current championship leaders. Russell acknowledges that they may have gone too far in their pursuit of performance. 
He believes that in the past two seasons, they have changed their approach multiple times, hoping to find a development path that would yield significant performance gains. However, they might have made too many changes, as opposed to the approach of other teams who have been consistently building upon their platform. Russell admits they need to find a balanced direction, as it is apparent that they have gone too extreme with the changes made to the car. They need to readjust slightly and find a happy medium. Nevertheless, Russell recognizes the challenges they face in such a competitive environment. While they strive to catch up with the leading teams, he acknowledges that it won't be easy. He emphasizes the need to find incremental improvements that will allow them to compete on a level playing field with the teams ahead of them. Currently sitting at P7 in the driver's standings, Russell appreciates the return to the traditional format for this weekend's Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. The added practice session will provide Mercedes with an opportunity to test their new parts. Already having upgraded the W15 in Miami, they are expecting more new parts to arrive at Imola. Russell believes this is an ideal moment for them, as they have been limited to a single practice session for the past two race weekends. This has put them at a slight disadvantage as they work to understand their car better. However, he acknowledges that their current position is partly due to a lack of understanding earlier in the year, and they are looking forward to getting back to a standard race weekend. Thanks for 500 subs, everyone. You guys are amazing, and I really appreciate the support. Let's keep pushing to 1,000. We are almost there. At the beginning of the season, James Vowles mentioned that Williams had difficulties reducing the weight of the FW46 due to the extensive repair work the team had to undertake. However, that changes now with the introduction of upgrades at Imola, aiming to bring the car closer to the required weight of 798 kilograms. Williams was expected to perform well in the 2024 season after earning 28 points last year and showing signs of improvement. However, they have yet to live up to those expectations. As one of the three teams yet to score, Williams currently holds eighth place in the Constructors' Championship. Despite Alex Albon achieving two P11 finishes, even his qualifying results fall short of the remarkable performances from last year. Vowles attributes this underperformance to the fact that the car is overweight, costing the team almost half a second per lap. He openly shared the reasoning behind Williams' struggles, highlighting the team's commitment to transparency, which is often uncommon in Formula One. Vowles revealed that Williams consistently produces cars that exceed the weight limit, including this year's model, which is approximately four and a half tenths of a second slower due to its excess weight. While the team successfully reduced the chassis weight by 14 kilograms during the transition from 2023 to 2024, they still find themselves dealing with an overweight car. Challenging the system and introducing new technology led to delays in resolving the weight issue. Unfortunately, this led to the addition of a substantial amount of weight. Despite improvements in the chassis's condition, this excess weight persists, potentially reaching up to 15 kilograms, which is believed to be worth 0.3 seconds on the track. Williams has brought new components to Imola that will be installed on Albon's car. However, resolving the weight problem won't be an immediate fix, as it is expected to take at least six races to achieve a reasonable weight reduction. Vowles emphasized the importance of moving forward rather than dwelling on past events. The weight reduction process begins at Imola and will continue over the next six races, ultimately bringing the car's weight to the desired level. In contrast to Williams' progress in weight reduction, their rivals, most notably Alpine, have made significant strides in addressing their own weight issues. Unfortunately, the Williams team has been greatly affected by early season crashes, resulting in challenges ranging from assembling replacement parts for the car to developing new components. Fundamentally, the team's progress has been hindered by the substantial damage incurred during the early races. They have experienced irreparable damage to four gearboxes, as well as five floors, four front wings, four rear wings, and various other components. Dealing with both the damage repairs and weight reduction simultaneously has proven to be a complex task. Vowels acknowledged the unexpected extent of the damage bill within three races, expressing his lack of pride in these facts. However, he emphasized that this situation marked a red line and a turning point. From this point onward, Williams is committed to producing cars that meet the required weight parameters without compromising performance. Max Verstappen dismissed the notion that Red Bull was reacting to McLaren's triumph in Miami by unveiling a new front wing and floor at Imola. He clarified that the upgrades were planned well in advance, with no direct response to their rival's success. Although Red Bull faced their second defeat of the season at the Miami Grand Prix, where Lando Norris secured victory in his extensively modified MCL38, 
Verstappen conceded that McLaren had the quicker car on that day. However, the dynamic nature of this season suggests that momentum swings can occur based on development progress. Consequently, it is now Red Bull's turn to enhance their car by introducing two significant components, a new front wing and floor at Imola. Verstappen emphasized that this move was not a reaction, but had been part of the long-term plan. He asserted that it isn't a situation where one team introduces upgrades, prompting them to scramble and respond accordingly. Instead, Red Bull's improvements have been in the works for quite some time. Verstappen acknowledged the necessity to continuously push forward as their pursuing competitors are progressively catching up. The events in Miami demonstrated that if they fail to execute flawlessly, other teams will gain an advantage. Following their dominant victory in Miami with a seven-second margin, McLaren expressed confidence that this was just the beginning. They believe their upgrades will prove more effective on other circuits than the Miami Autodrome. Verstappen, however, expressed uncertainty about the upcoming race at Imola and whether it will favor McLaren's new upgrades. He anticipated that it would take some time for any team to fully understand and optimize the potential of their updates. Verstappen acknowledged the crucial role played by minor details in terms of lap times. On a track like Miami, where conditions are sensitive and the temperature is high, even slight loss of grip can result in a significant decline in lap performance. Apart from McLaren and Red Bull, Ferrari is also introducing an upgraded car, the Red Bull-influenced SF24 at Imola. Verstappen identified a trend of converging car designs toward Red Bull's philosophy. To secure a victory, he emphasized the need for impeccable performance, considering that Red Bull has already missed out on two victories this season, having only surrendered one last year. Verstappen contemplated whether their previous successes were due to their solid execution or mistakes made by other teams, acknowledging the difficulty in arriving at a definitive answer. Nevertheless, he stressed the importance of constantly striving for perfection, even though it is impossible to achieve flawless weekends every time. As other teams improve and align their vehicles more closely to Red Bulls, the competitive field becomes narrower. Lewis Hamilton stated that if he were in Toto Wolff's position, he would sign Andrea Kimi Antonelli to compete for Mercedes in the 2025 Formula One season. Earlier this year, Hamilton surprised the F1 community by announcing his departure from Mercedes at the end of this season to join Ferrari under a multi-year contract. This decision came only five months after he had extended his contract with Mercedes, utilizing a brake clause before the start of the new season. Many drivers, including Carlos Sainz, whom Hamilton will be replacing at Ferrari, and current world champion Max Verstappen, have been linked with George Russell as potential partners for the 2025 season. Nevertheless, Mercedes seems to favor their own 17-year-old talented junior driver, Antonelli, currently competing in F2, as Hamilton's replacement in the team for the upcoming season. Hamilton expressed his support for the young prodigy Antonelli while speaking to the media, ahead of the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix at Imola. This race marks his first appearance in Italy as a Ferrari driver. When asked about the possibility of Mercedes signing signs as his successor, Hamilton replied that Sainz is an excellent driver who would be an asset to any team. However, in Hamilton's opinion, if he were in charge, he would likely opt for Antonelli as the right choice. The FIA recently confirmed to PlanetF1.com that they have received a special request to allow Antonelli to race in Formula One before his 18th birthday, the age when aspiring drivers become eligible for an F1 super license. Antonelli's 18th birthday falls on August 25th, coinciding with the Dutch Grand Prix, which takes place after the summer break. Mercedes may consider placing Antonelli in the customer team Williams to replace Logan Sargent temporarily. This arrangement would enable Mercedes to assess Antonelli's performance alongside regular driver Alex Albon before making a decision on whether to promote him alongside Russell for the 2025 season. Antonelli has recently begun an extensive F1 testing program, driving previous Mercedes cars at Imola and the Red Bull Ring. Additionally, it is believed that he participated in a comparison test with reserve driver Mick Schumacher at Silverstone to help Mercedes evaluate his potential. However, Wolf denied rumors that Mercedes is actively pursuing Antonelli's entry into Formula One in 2024, emphasizing that they have other pressing matters to attend to and that Formula Two remains a priority for them to address. Now check this video next where McLaren make a big statement on how Lando vs. Max would end up.